Welcome to another episode, man. Thank y'all for being with us. Is that cold? No, the cold. We back in the building, man. Me, myself, John Johnson over here to my left. This left right here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's me, yeah. Louis Andrew. Yeah. yeah. He right. What's happening, y'all? Yeah. Yes, indeed, man. Here today to talk a little bit about education, uh, the education system. And on that note, we have a very special guest with us today, uh, my man Kamal Hamilton. Going give it up, give it up, my man Kamal Hamilton in the house. Kamal Hamilton happens to be a teacher at a local public school, uh, so we, we hope to pull from some of his experience yes, in the education system. Uh, how long you been teaching, man? About 10 years now. Season. Feel like yesterday, yo, but good, good dime in the business now and still learning, still learning. So you say you say you've been teaching for 10 years and what? About 10 years. Middle school teacher. I started. I actually started at the high school year two at the high school before I moved over to the middle school. Mm. So my my expertise range is really middle school to high school. No doubt, no doubt. Now, um, so most of your career has been within the middle school. Yeah. Dealing with 13, 14 year olds. Definitely. Things of that nature. Yes, sir. So I'm sure you see a share of uh, events. Yes, I have. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I have. Yes, indeed. Kamal happens to teach at the same high school that all of us, excuse me, same middle school that all of us went to. Um, oh, you sure. know, so we had our shared experiences. So when I laugh, that's just me reminiscing on some of the things we don't, might Don't worry, I won't, I won't ask none you of the know, teachers man. about y'all, how y'all <laughs> was back in the days. I won't ask, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, no doubt. So what's, what's the best part about teaching for you? Man, you might, you might have the roughest of days, but when you get that kid that you that you see turn it around, that's my favorite part. It was, mm. is the kid that everybody counts out. Right. That kid that everybody thinks can't do it. Mm. And you see that kid get the spark and you see that kid go on to be successful. They come back with their suit on, they got a job, they graduated, they they doing something with their life and they come back and they're like, yo, listen, you know, part of the reason why I'm where, you, where I am is because of something that you mm. said or something you did or the attention that you paid or even just a little compliment that you made, a joke that you did, you know, something, mm -hmm. something small that you forget about can mean the world to somebody else. So, and then you find that out in the education world a lot. Like, That's dope. you know, you might have, you might have just said something in passing to a kid, like, "Yo, you're a smart kid. You should do something with yourself." You come, you find out five years later, yo, that that kid is successful, and they come back and they're like, "Listen, that sentence that you said, you know, put me on my way." And it's a good feeling. It's mm -hmm. good. That's fly. So it's, yeah. it's not just about the curriculum. Nah. For you, it's a lot deeper than that because nah. it seems like you, you enjoy touching those lives. You're trying to build character. You're trying to build. You're trying to build a person. Of course, you're trying to build an educated person. Right. But you're still trying to build a person that got to go out there into the community and they got to be a part of society. They gonna build a family. So you really trying to build character. Character is the name of the game when it comes to teaching. You want to teach them lessons in a book. But the best lessons you could teach is, is the stuff that you go through in the street. It sounds like you um you deal with the aspect that I think a lot of our kids don't get often enough in schools and that's the aspect of love. Because you know, it seems like you're involved in that, you know, when you're when you're dealing with these uh, young men and women. I tell people all the time, as a teacher, one of the one of the things we say all the time as teachers, we talk about this amongst ourselves, we like, listen, our job isn't just teaching. You're a psychologist, you a you a big brother, you a father, you a you all of these different things to this kid who some of these kids they come to the table, they let you know, listen, you know, they their situation is, is dire, they have nothing, they have nobody, you know, they their backs against the wall and you become all of those things without even knowing it. They come to you and they talk to you about their problems. You a psychologist, you giving them advice? Yeah, now you're a psychologist. Mm. You giving them advice about girls or you know something that's going on in the community, you like their big brother, you like their father. So you take on all these roles as a teacher, or at least as a good teacher. Right. Because mm. you have a lot of teachers who out there who, these are just, Nine these are just a, Punch. Yeah, come just a work, name, go home. Yeah. pass, fail, right. keep mm. it moving. I go on to my summer vacation and right. you have teachers out there like that. and. You know, they give the teaching profession a bad name. Right. 
You know, I know recently there was a teacher in town. You know, and I'm not, I don't want to blow up no school names or no teacher names or nothing like I that. I can't say you any know, names. Can be right. to yeah, protect, yeah, yeah, protect yeah. the innocent. Yeah, just to be fair, you know. But right, I think right. that we had a recent instance here where a teacher admitted that he failed two kids because they didn't stand for the national anthem. I you actually know, know that. And that was one of those individual. things where I had him. He was a teacher of mine when I was in school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I knew him personally. Right. Um, you know, but I, I found it to be almost, um, what's the word? Cavalier him to literally go on Facebook and straight up admit it and like you know put the nail in his own coffin. But I'm glad he did it because I think it made it made it exposed, for it exposed I was gonna say it made for a valid um, you know of coming to light of, of you know kind of the ability of and as we say racism is the ability to influence someone's life even because politics, of your bias. Because again, politics. you could be biased racially biased and yeah. being a racist is different to me and you can impact someone's life negatively and. He basically took it upon himself. You talk about the power of teaching. We you know what I mean? I just told you that the 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 good power of teaching, but yo, that's the flip side of right. it is the negative aspect of teaching. Right. As quick as somebody could teach you a good lesson, there's somebody that could teach you a negative lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. So you you have teachers that bring their biases to the table. They bring their politics to the table. They bring their religion to the table. They bring all this stuff to the table and use it to make decisions on your kids. We have this. Mm -hmm. It exists. Mm -hmm. And when you have cases like this, all it does is put a spotlight on it. It just right. put a spotlight. Like you thought you you thought that went away. Nah, that's going on right, right here in right. your community. Right. right. Yeah. Somebody from outside right. of your community, our community. Right. can come right. Right. into right. your community and, and tell you what to do way. in your community. Right. That's right. that's, that's the dangerous. flip side that's of dangerous. it. Yeah. Right. You know. I think in a, in, a, in a sense, this is why all of us in here who are teachers have to take a moment to tip our head in your direction yeah, because right. you're, you're a bit of a rarity in the education field being a black male teacher. Right. We hear all the time about the shortages of right. black male teachers. You know, coming up, we can all personally attest to the fact we didn't right. have many, right. if right. any. I had all. one black male teacher and he was in 11th grade. Mm. You know, shout out to Mr. Wayne because he was a real one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As a teacher I like you said, had two, he gave you game. He kind of, you know, he talked to you like an adult, like tried to prepare you for what was ahead of you, you know, but yeah, only in a, in a black male teacher I had. Right. 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 In the high school, in my high school, I went to high school, Hempstead High School, made up of predominantly African Americans and Hispanic students. And when I tell you I had two or three, you know, black male teachers, that's it. Right. So for a long time, I didn't think that teaching was even something that that we could do. I thought for a long time that, yo, to be a teacher, you had to be some white person, old white person, gray hair, you know, with your, with your briefcase. And, right, you know, yeah, you just come and go. That's what I thought teaching was until somebody hit me to the game and was like, listen, we need people like you. The, kid, the kids need to see people like you, positive people. I had guidance counselors at the high school who brought me back after a couple years in high school, uh, in college. I was like, yo, come back and talk to these kids and let them know, you know, what you went through and where you are now. And that's what kind of brought me around to the idea. Like, you know what? That my mom's was telling me from from I was young that teaching is good. She told me she had you want to talk about some prophecy. Mm -hmm. She told me from I was young, like, yo, you're going to be a good teacher one day. Mm -hmm. And I would tell her, teacher, me, you see my grades. You, see what you, <laughs> you sure? Mm -hmm. But. Lo and behold, one day I called up like, listen, I'm, I'm about to take a teaching job. <laughs> right. that's, that's real, man. That's real. It's, it's good to have your back. Because, I mean, yeah. even thinking about it, just having children and um, sending them into the schools. You know, they're there for eight hours a day, five oh. days a week, nine and a half, ten months out of the year. You know what I'm saying? So the majority of their time is spent there. The teachers, especially at the age moms are six, three, because, you know, they were one teacher all day. The oh, teachers are mommy and daddy. For the most part, I mean literally, because, like I said, this is where they're spending the bulk of their time with. So the habits, the um, the environment that's around them, you know what I'm saying, the other children. Mm -hmm. This is what's bringing a heavy influence on our kids. At that age, they hear the teacher's voice more than they hear your voice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, How many hours just... you spend with your kid in the evenings after you pick them up from school and you do, you know, you do all your evening activities? They go to their bed probably what time? Nine o'clock, ten o'clock, whatever. How many hours do you actually get to have a conversation with your child at the end of the day? And have an influence. On that talking about now, you, now you're talking about you have the weekend. Now you have two days where you could. Now you're talking about a teacher who's with your child every day. 
Mm -hmm. those hours, giving them, instilling messages in them, instilling (laughs) values in them. Who who's has more of an impact on your child at the end of the day when you really look at it number wise, time wise, which is why it's very important. In my at least in my case, I was what I wanted was first of all somebody who looked like them, because I knew that if that woman had a child at home that looked like mine, it was going to be a different outcome at the end of the day. It was more relatable. Okay. You're not an alien coming into this situation. You know what I'm saying and you're gonna treat my child with love and a sense of respect, somewhat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Depending on who you are, because more than likely that's how you, you know what I'm saying? Treat mm-hmm. your child at home. Right. So that's one thing that I saw that. But I noticed as they get older, the chances of them maintaining those motherly and fatherly, you know, figures in the school system right. become slimmer and slimmer. Mm-hmm. And like I said, this is the place where they have to go and be influenced for the majority of their day. And you could you could yeah. you could partially blame that on a lot of the testing and all that standardized testing and all that that kind of stuff because the the time that teachers used to have back in our days where the, you know just even the time to have a conversation with you and you know how did you spend your time how did you spend your weekend what did you do you know getting to know you kind of stuff mm-hmm. that time is now replaced with test grade test grade and you know you just it becomes a cycle of testing that the the whole getting to know you part of teaching is, is almost extinct mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you talk you about it through material you, you talk to any teacher you know they go the first thing they go complain about is how many students they have on their roster yo i got a hundred and something students that that i deal with every single year you know think about that every year i got a hundred and something students I don't have time to to get to know each of those students, and that's a that's a big part of the the teaching part is getting to know those kids that you're trying to teach. Harrison Ford and Beyonce. So yeah, that's that's, that's, that's hard. Yeah. Who is it? It's um. I don't know who got it. Some, some nobody. But he did a good job. Oh, they the black dude. Nah, you think nah? Thinking what's thinking his name? Blood, Childish Gambino yeah, is um yeah, Billy D. Williams' character. Yeah, yeah. You know, but even their their history plays out pretty ill, which which to me gives it the credence to the original. Because right. everybody heard the story of how he got the Millennium Falcon from Lando. Right. So in the movie, you know, you get to see how, right. you know, he got the Falcon. Because <clears throat> the Falcon was the shit. Right. You know, but it, it the second the shit started it was just popping. I don't think I was saying no more. You know, you know how he was a hustler. He was always into something. As soon as he got out of something, he'd get into something else. And then he had to get out of that shit. Like, I, just got my, I just got my fire stick reprogrammed, son. I'm yeah, I got to get my again, son. Too, I got my shit reprogrammed, I'm baby. I'm, I'm ready to go again, son. What are you going to do that? Like, five, my, six, nah, my man. What? I just got a co that. Uh, hey, YouTube. Well, I got to go online on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do, you do, do my shit, shit Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I, I got my shit going after like three attempts. You know, it took me a few goals at it. Yeah, like, I, I had a co-worker that owed me so a couple of dollars, and he owed me like forty dollars for some fan making shit. I had that nigga unlocking fire sticks like all winter, son. That, <laughs> that was a Christmas gift to everybody. Like you get an unlock fire stick. I was mm-hmm. throwing shit at everybody. Like Christmas gifts for everybody. So I had that nigga unlocking the shit. <laughs> like, so let me back rolling. Yeah. You right. so, left off talking about um. What was we talking about? We was talking about the education, <laughs> the educational system. Um, your experience in the education system. We were, you know, speaking on how grateful we are to have a, a black male teacher amongst us because you guys are such a rarity. And then off camera, we were talking a little bit about um, some of the problems with the educational system, which you also hit it on also, uh, saying that there's a dark side. You know, you spoke on the bright side and the reasons why you love it. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the problems you may see, you know, being there every day? Yeah. Like, if there was one thing you could change, what what would it be? Ooh, you can't ask a teacher if there's one thing you change. <laughs> we can be here all day, but mm. just, you know, on the tail end of the, the conversation we were having about before, the power of teaching, you know, the implicit bias that comes along with teaching and teaching people that might not be familiar to you or t- familiar to your background or that you're comfortable with. And unfortunately, you know, as, as human beings, we bring those biases with us to the table and we treat students accordingly and we treat them as such. Mm-hmm. 
So you'll see a lot of, and you've been hearing a lot of this, you, you know, the, the, the justice in the education field, you know, brought to us by certain cases, you know, but there's a lot of stuff going on where they're finding out that, you know, just because of the color of your skin, you're more likely to be suspended. You're more likely to be kicked out of class. You're more likely to be expelled from school. You and a white kid did the same thing. A white kid in another school got a slap on the wrist. Boys will be boys. Why is it that in our community that the same infringement, the same crime, now you're, you're talking about this kid is being charged as an adult and now their, their livelihood is, is now in damage. And, and that's, you know, the, the dark side of teaching is, is you get these people and, and you, look, you, you look in our communities and, and you could go across the, across the United States and go into any community of color go into any community where it's predominantly African American, pre predominantly Hispanic, and you walk through their schools, what do you think you're gonna see? You're gonna see a reflection of the community, or you're gonna see a reflection of somebody else's community? So, um, you bring up something real interesting, man, because I think all of us here have heard the term school to prison pipeline, right? Yeah. So, what you're saying is that the teachers, who we give the power of authority over our children during the day, right, the power of discipline, mostly don't reflect our appearance, right? Same thing can be said for the people policing our communities. Oh yeah. They don't really reflect our appearance, right? So we have these 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 white policemen policing our communities, excuse me. We have these white teachers teaching our children. Are they subconsciously prepping them as authority figures to be passed off to the prison system? After school, is this is this a subconscious? And a, a, a key for a, a key part system? to that is is a lot of it, you know, might be subconscious. Mm. It's it's the years of grooming, you know, without even knowing, you know, you've been groomed to think a certain way. You you sit around your family and they talk, and your family talks, and you, <coughs> you're groomed the way you think is it has been given to you over years and years. So some people are they making these split decisions and ruining somebody's life. It might not even be, you know, I went out there actively trying to ruin somebody's life. I mm -hmm. I just acted the way that I thought or I acted the way that I knew or I, I reacted the way that I knew or and we end up with these cases. Yeah. Yeah. Cognitive biases and whatnot. Yeah. It's 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 always in the back of their mind. And unfortunately, African American males and more and more African American females, the the notion of us being violent and uncontrollable is a narrative that's been passed down for so long that even we start to believe that that shit is real. Even we, you know, knowing that we come from kings and queens, even we can be told, you know, you know, that's that's what you that's just what you are. And you can believe it. If you're told a, a lie long enough, you, the lie becomes the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have now where you can just look at an African American male and and think violent thoughts. This this kid is, is gonna be violent. This kid is gonna not gonna listen to me. He's not gonna respect my authority. And that's just walking into the room. You just walked in the room and just met the kid, then mm. your your interaction with that kid is already molded by years of thinking, years of watching TV, years of listening to your family and whatever else you're into. So it's, it's not only the perception that the teachers have of the students, but also the perception that the students have of themselves. Definitely. And the, the, the school system, would you say, is it doing enough to change that perception? Or is it you have you have some that are that are trying mm -hmm. you know you have some that are trying you you have a lot that turn a blind eye to it right because to acknowledge it means you have to do something about it right so it's easier to act like it's not there than actually do something about it True. that's the biggest thing you'll have most that are just gonna say you know what it doesn't exist and if just like I said about the lie if you say it doesn't exist for long enough mm -hmm. people out there start saying you know what maybe it really doesn't exist until the case comes up, until a big case comes up and it brings it back to everyone's attention again. But it's, it's easy to turn a blind eye to it. Um, our school district in particular, um, a couple years ago, 
the superintendent, you know, realized that there were there wasn't enough cultural reflection in the curriculum, and he actually got the district together to come up with a plan to to add more culture to the curriculum, mm -hmm. so that a kid, you know, comes in as reading, you know, in class that you know there's there's a story in there that that the kid can say, yo, look, it's a somebody that looks like me, oh, she, you know, mm -hmm. because for you can. Talk about when we was growing up. You, you have how many books you read in English class that had somebody that looked like you, right. or sounded like or you, ethnic name, or had or an black, ethnic you know, name, yeah, 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 like a, anything, yeah, anywhere. Some reflection of it, yeah, yeah. We were non-existent in the curriculum, right. which makes it unrelatable. Which makes it unrelatable. Right. Makes you look at it and go, I respect yeah, that. You know, I, I didn't know he did that. I respect that. And that's a big problem. I mean, I think for all of us as students, we can relate and say that yeah, a lot of the materials we were given, we just couldn't feel. You know what I'm saying? On any level, really. It just, it wasn't an affinity for the information that was being given us because we couldn't see a reflection of ourselves in it or an immediate practical application yeah. for it at that particular time. It was like, all right, I know I got to sit here. I got to listen to this. I gotta and then, this. But, then, but then it gets even more it gets even more sinister when you really want to take it to a sinister level is we see no reflection we see no reflection and when, when you finally do see a reflection it, it's a criminal or it's a it's a drug yeah. drug dealer or a drug user or mm. a broken family or some shit so when they finally do show you a picture of your life it's something messed up mm. and you're like damn like that's what you believe. What you're shown is what you believe. You show that per that picture long enough, they, that that person's gonna believe that whatever you present to them. And every time you show them that picture, you have to ask yourself the question: Is that me? Yeah. And if they, not everybody's strong enough to, to constantly remind themselves, like, oh no, that's not me. That's just the strongest the person has to remind themselves. To. You know what I'm saying? But if you if, if you keep on getting hit in the face with it, this shit gonna swell up. You know what I'm saying? You you gonna feel the effects of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some so more than others, they gave some more than others. And it has to do with your family upbringing because my family upbringing was 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 strong. You know, like I come from a Jamaican family that was listen. You're you're a king. You come from kings and queens. But that still didn't stop the fact that I had to go out into a world with people that looked at me like I was a pauper. Mm -hmm. That that my name, which which hold, held so much power in 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 Africa in ancient times, is something to be made fun of. You know, coming from a, from these people. So you know, I came home and said to to my parents, oh, "Listen, I want to change my name. I don't like my name." You know, like boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom. And they have to remind me, "Yo, listen, like yo." Don't let them, to, they don't know what your name is about. You know what your name is about. And they got us, you know, give you the cold water, smack you up a couple times and get you get you focused again because you go out in the world, the world is cold. That's right. And like I said, the messages that you hear, you outside of your home more than you're inside of your home. Mm. You talk to strangers more than you talk to your family in a day. So at the end of the day, the messages that you end up having are... So you could have the most powerful family telling you, you know, do the right thing, do the right thing. It takes a strong person to take that and actually go out into the world and hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Hold on, unblemished. How many, how many of us can say we went through through life unblemished? Mm. No. Never made a mistake. Not high. <laughs> if I told you it wasn't me, my nose would be across the room right now. Like we. We human beings, we gotta make mistakes. Hopefully, the mistakes aren't, aren't, you know, dire, and you could bounce back from them. You know, speaking of school, I think the number one thing that always lets you know that you're in the wrong place culturally is when the teacher calls out the names of the person, and she calls Jamal Jamal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She, she calls 
Kareem, Lord knows what, but it don't sound nothing like Kareem. Yeah, mama, you know I mean, what I'm my saying? My name is Chopped like, in School. And, and that's the question I was going to ask you. And bounce. You want to change it. I know the teachers have something to do with that. Man, they, listen. Because they, 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 they will. They my will name has been, been chopped up. So you start believing is what they pronounced it as. Like, yeah, that, that was close enough. And you'll correct me. Like, 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 we've we been saying it wrong. You know my name is. You see, when you got one of those names, the first day of school is always that feeling every class. You see, like, the first time. I already know. When they start calling out the last like, name. They called out everybody first name all of a sudden. You have them to you like yeah. At first, you you like, yeah. You really, wasn't even going to try? Early, <laughs> early, like, forget it. And after a while, I was just ready. As soon as they messed it up, I was like, nah. nah, nah it become, it become a game. Like, no, like, it become a game. It's like, yo, you put money in, like, yo, let me see which one of them get it. Somebody going to get it. Which one going to get it, right? Yo, somebody going to get it, right? Like, and I never had that problem, but I used to always say that. <laughs> I used to be the guy that was last cracking up. Like, yo, yeah, yeah, like, uh, here it come. Here it come. Jam over. <laughs> It's just like your fam. <laughs> yeah. like, yo. But this is what we deal with. It's, it's cultural differences. Yeah. And these things that are that simple that we would expect or know, any one of us would just know. We know with their eyes closed that these people have to struggle to kind of even understand. If you have to understand, struggle to understand my name, yeah. it's going to be, you're going to have it's a hard, hard time, time trying to understand, understand anything person. about my life. You know anything saying? about my life. Yeah, because you, you don't understand my world the way I come from. Yeah. To you, it's a threat. To you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm this is the first time you've seen Jamal on a piece of paper. Yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> you, you don't know how Jamal's at. So, yeah, like, yeah, how are you yeah. going to yeah. deal with Jamal? I'm going to say that's some stuff thing. this year that's going to offend you. And, unfortunately... This is just what it's gonna be. Like. It says a lot. And that and think about that. You know, I ain't even I I never even thought about that, you know, that deeply in terms of, you know, you're talking about making somebody comfortable, you know, you're about to teach this kid for a whole school year yeah. and on day one you've already ostracized that kid in the classroom. Like, yeah, like, like, like nigga, I don't know. You you're chopping up their name and you are you so, brand new. Yo, this I seen teachers laugh like yo. Yeah. I, 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 yo, we got African <laughs> students that yo the teachers are like, I, 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 yo, O O D, O D, you O D now for the rest of the year. You're O D. Don't even take the time to even say yo. How do you pronounce? Yo, don't even ask the kid. Yo, how am I gonna pronounce it? You know like, yo, listen, your first name got an O in it. Your last name got a D. Yo, you're O D for the rest of the year. And I see the teacher will call from September to June. That you're O D. O D. O D. Cool. Your P O. Your O D. Like. I'm not gonna. Get, I'm not gonna school. take the time to get to know and pronounce your name. Why? Why should I do that when I'm? I'm gonna learn to have another 150 kids next school year. Bye. And, and, and it's crazy See? because um, I think the number one thing that doesn't happen in schools, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. My experience as a student, the curriculum does nothing to empower the students. There's no sense of empowerment whatsoever. So for me, being involved in the things I was involved in high school and acting out, I felt a sense of power. You know what I mean? It was a sense of establishment. Like, yeah, this is this is what I do right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was sticking your chest. There's nothing about that curriculum that does that for you. So you have the rebellious students who know, and whether they whether they are aware of it or not, that yeah, I should be in some position of power. This is my time right here. You know what I mean? They feel it. And watch this. And this is why you have things that happen. If you, know you have saying? people, if you have people that come from the place that you come from. And know what you've been through and what you're going to go through. They're going to be able to guide you in ways that other people are not going to be able to guide you. They're going to be able to see a talent that you have and see what you could do with it instead mm -hmm. of what you're doing with it. Right. Yo, you got the gift of gab. Yo, you got, you got the gift of gab. Instead of you using that gift of gab to be a hustler, I could take you over here. You could be on the debate team and get a scholarship off that. Right. Yo, you, you, you good with your hands, fam. Yo, how about I get you over here and doing something positive with it? Now you could now you could have a career off of that. Now you could make money off of that. That takes somebody to see. See that. Remember what I said? It's easier to ignore than to actually deal with the problem. Right. Right. The easiest thing in the world is to ignore something. Mm. You could turn around anytime. Like, yo, you can see something going on over there. Turn around. Mm. It's no longer real. And it, hey, it's not happening. I don't see it anymore. Mm. Is it really going on? I don't know. But to actually do something about the problem mm. is where the work comes in. And uh, most people are not ready to put in that work. Mm. They say they are, 
But when you call them up at six in the morning, you're like, yo, it's time to put that work in. Like, oh, you see what happened was people are really hyped to talk about work needing to be done. Everybody but, delegate. Like, but like you said, that 6 a.m. Uh, roll call. Everybody want to be a delegate. Everybody like want to tell you stories. what you got to do. Everybody knows what you got to do and right. tell you, yo, <laughs> everybody want to be the, the captain and you right. do this. And then you're like, wait, if all of us giving orders, then who actually following the orders? Who actually right. doing, doing work? And that's why a lot of shit becomes unsuccessful is because it's much easier to do this than to do this. It's easier to do this than to do this. Talking is easy. Working is hard, yo. You know, anybody can make a plan. Who gonna follow it? Right. <laughs> who, who gonna execute the plan? Right. Right. Exactly. I could throw any plan up in the air and this shit sounds good. Yeah, we could all agree. Yo, that shit sounds perfect. Shake hands at that day. <laughs> yo, we <laughs> come up with a great plan. Right. And the next day we like, yo, how's that plan gonna get into action though? Like, yeah. Ooh. Who got people? Really and that's what makes the discussion on even like looking at the different areas of just social structure, you know, education as we're talking about now is how do you overhaul it on that kind of scale? You know, how, how do you do that? You know, and it has to start grassroots, it has to start individually, it has to start small, that's it, work its way up. But, mm -hmm. you know, time wise, how long does that take? You know, and, and how does it get done? Because that's the tough part. You know, listen, we it's, got nothing but like time. Like you said, it's like, all right, I could want to do something, but now I have to have certain either resources, facilities, access, income, you know, whatever requirements might come with whatever venture it is you're thinking about. You know, there, there's, there's a lot to be said for identifying that issue. And now it's like, all right, how do we build something to, to, to counteract you know, the negative part of, of, of what we're, what we're kind of dealing with. You know? I think it's a, a concerted effort to identify the model of success that we're trying to move towards mm -hmm. and then figure out how we can make it for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Where we can, all right, this is the plan. Here, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. And everyone can just take it and apply it to, you know what I'm saying, build their own pods and all the pods they fit together, they're interchangeable. If one dies off, the next one pops up, you know what that's, I'm saying? Because where we've struggled is because we, 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 we've, these movements have been started around singular entities, and as soon as that entity is gone, the movement is a vacuum of leadership, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's what people didn't realize about <clears throat> the, treacherous, the treacherousness of RICO law. Uh, you run your business, although it's illegal, but you run it to the point where they can't get nothing on you. And they can just say that person is the leader of a criminal enterprise. So now, whether you were or you weren't, you could be just a nigga who was doing his thing. But if you were, now that enterprise has no leadership. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of little small enterprises, you know what I'm saying, without direction are running around making it easier to take everything incarcerate and like it's just man and that, that's what we've been saying you know just nobody know how to squat up because when we did squat up the head of the snake was constantly attacked and we have to get to a point where there is no head of the snake Everything's we're all the head of the snake. Yeah, we was talking we're about all this the same. Way. You know, I was what talking mean? about this with my brother the other day, and it was like you know we talking about the levels, and it's like your first level is you're dependent. You know, this is this is your young phase. You know, this is when you're growing up. Then you become independent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the second level. Now I can take care of myself. I can do certain things on my own. But the final level is interdependence. You know what I mean? The final level is when people learn how to work together. Right. You know, learn how to work towards a goal together. And I think, like you said, how do you, like, there has to be standards. You know what I mean? Like, chaos is chaos, but there, order is order is a requirement for success in some facet. You know what I mean? Like, there has to be some sort of framework for you to, to okay. up, uphold what it is that you're trying to do. You know, yeah, as we were talking about respect. that shit, he brought up, like, the Game of Thrones, and it was, you know, it's like, yo, you, like, you got to have a standard. Like, you know, Atlanta Stories pays his debts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just certain... 
basic ways and, and just use that as an example, but again, as a people, we won't accept below a certain standard. Like we, we expect a certain level of commitment or you know what I mean which is why again you can look around and I'm telling you it's like you can't reinvent the wheel you can look around at other groups mm -hmm. and see the attributes that make them successful <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not it's not rocket science you know what I mean you don't have to you know pattern everything and every you know but the, the, the a, basics of what makes a group successful there's, as a, group a, there's a level of this. respect for self that's right. involved in that right what where where you have to uphold I that on a your, certain level of listen, excellence this is where, what we're gonna hold ourselves right. to we're not gonna accept anything less than that and when we see our people holding less to that right. we're gonna make sure they know that we need them to get up to this level because we are judged by by the lowest of our society and that's not the same for every group out there because you don't you don't hear that you know you don't hear a black person a white person necessarily say you know they fail and they say damn you know i failed for the for the white culture you don't hear that that uh -huh. that tied to them but you uh, a black person that's naturally tied to us yo you failed damn you know you, you have the really black culture you, the, damn, yo man. that's the pressure we got on us yeah, though that's the like, pressure that real. we have on us like you know you you in an environment yeah. where it's let's say you give and this is where we talk about majority always rules, majority rules. So if you're in an environment where you're a minority now and you're whatever, in certain circles, and it only takes one thing for you to not be able to, you know, execute on what you need to do. If I fail at this. You know, for the, for the culture. Like they ain't never going to let nobody if I, else. Like, if they never going to another one of us. Like, yo, you messed that package all up. Nah, we, we, yeah, we don't that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not like, rocking with you or anybody who And the worst like part you. is when you observe someone, you know, one of ours, where you just like, oh, man. You want to pull like, it to the side killing us right now. But that's you're what killing we, us, right? But, but see, that's the thing. Instead of us going, shh, yo, look, yo, yeah, look, Talk about it. Yo, yeah, yeah, we gotta pull the homie to the side like, like, yo, listen, yeah, man. my yo. <laughs> what, what you I mean? I don't really see, but that's well, what, the thing, what do you need to, to, to get to that next level? Let me tell I, you, bro. I thought we never, we never think about it. Like, we see that motherfucker over there messing up, but but who gonna go over there? Why ain't we over there with him? Who gonna be you know the one to tap him on the shoulder and be and go back again? You know, it's easy to say, yo, he need to do right over there, than to go over and walk over the brother and be like, yo, listen, this is how you do right. Yeah, or this is how uh, this, this is the plan. This, this is how, how we're gonna help you doing it. do what you need to do. You you know, know, I don't even really feel no kind of way though. To be honest with you, like I, right, for example, I used to have this college class, right, and this white professor, and mm -hmm. there was this one black kid in there. He must have been from like Haiti or or somewhere. He wasn't from this country, mm -hmm. but you say nigga all the time in class and shit. Like he didn't know it was like culturally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Like you know, <laughs> got white teachers or some shit. Said, nigga, 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 nigga. I ain't never said shit to him. Like I know some of them black kids. They was like, Wow. Yeah, he go, you know what I mean, whatever, whatever. Yo, we're not a monolithic people. No people is a monolithic people. The truth. We is in many different facets of us. And I can appreciate, I appreciated him in a way that white teacher never could. Because every, every time he cringe, I laugh. You know what I'm saying? All right, I say this, in a work environment though, this is my thing. I look at work like this, right? Every day I jump in the water and I swim against the current. Mm. So if I see you doing shit like that, I'm watching you swim against the current with a 40 pound weight on your back. <laughs> no, I understand and what I'm you're not saying. trying to and say, yo, let me help you cut that weight off your back because other than that, you're giving an honest effort. You're just right. as good as your peers, if not better. You know what I mean? And you that can take alone, that energy and do the right thing with it, bro. You, you, yo, you be a hell of a swimmer you know if you're yeah, what you're speaking to, with that energy. What you're yeah. speaking to, I understand. When I'm speaking to is something a little bit different. Like, you know, if you see like a story on the news, you be like, I hope he ain't black, man. I hope he ain't black. Right. You know that's what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't do that shit. But, but that's the pressure of being a minority. Right. You see. Right. You see one of your own, you naturally gonna feel like his family. You naturally feel like that's that's on your team, and you want to see your team succeed, and you want to see your team go doing good. So even if I'm on right. the block and I see somebody doing stupid shit, like damn, that's yeah. making all of us out here look stupid. But it's all, son. it's all an illusion. It's it all is. an illusion. It is. At the end of the day, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You're right. And I, I try not to get caught right. up in that aspect of it because I know there's ten times the amount of white people doing the same shit. They just put this nigga on the news for, yep. you know what I mean? Doing it whatever the case is. We pride for people, y'all. We over here. It's yeah. the power. Yeah. Because what, like you said, we being judged. But we know reality, it's the optical illusion. We know it's look, the okie doke show. But at the same day, it still hurt when you see it. Like, damn. How can you judge God? You can't judge God. You can't have, if we created you, how do we give you the power to then turn around and judge? Do your parents ever give you the power to judge them? I mean, in no reality at the end of the day. So I'm just saying, we've been taught to think within certain parameters 
that I think it is detrimental for us to, to ward off in order to stop the cycle from continuing. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just it's just certain things. You know what I mean? A lot of things, you know, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and it comes out at all angles. But to really deal with it, we got to really start being honest with ourselves, at least in my opinion. Word. And that's you know why I mean? I, that's why I go back to what you're saying about the what's gonna be our stand, what's gonna be our our standard that we carry to that we say, listen. And if you use respect as that standard, listen, I'm gonna respect you no matter what you bring to the table. I'm gonna respect you no matter what you bring to the table. The mission is this. This is the mission. I don't care about all that side. Shit. I don't care about all that silly shit. Yeah, we might have had this going on years ago. Let's get all that shit out the way and focus on the mission. We respect each other enough. To get this mission accomplished, if we could really get on a level like that, because they could kept us divided with some of the small silly shit that if you could eliminate some of that small stuff, some of these little divisions like, that they don't like respect and like other like principles or values and shit, like once those are in place, what? it doesn't matter what? What, what the mission is. The you mission is gonna get accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's on one accord. Once everybody you know that's things align. Divide and conquer is the most powerful shit they ever thought of. Whoever came up with the first person that said, yo, listen, divide and conquer, whoever was the first person to come up with that is probably one of the smartest people that ever existed. Because that's, that's, that blueprint the key to victory. is the key to any victory. You got a big group of people. Yo, you split them up into small group. Tell this group this, tell group this, group this, tell this group this. All of a sudden, your war is easy. You conquer group by group after that. Divide and conquer, son, and that's what they've been doing to us for and, too and, and long. That, with that in mind, what do we have to divide and conquer? We have to divide ourselves from our, our mentality. I think that's the biggest thing in the way we see the world and perceive ourselves. Yeah. Because whether we know it or not, we've been perceived to see ourselves as being powerless. Mm -hmm. We haven't been caught, brought up to think that you can own McDonald's. You was brought up to think when you was 15 or 16, you should fill out an application and maybe get a job there. We were never taught to take power, economically or in any other aspect of life. Because our parents weren't in positions of power to give us that blueprint on how to do it. Yeah. So how do we undo that and give that mind to our children, not having that mind ourselves? We got to check everything that we've been getting. You know but what check, I'm saying? But check it out. Just the way you live and think, think about this. What you see is what you become. You see success enough, you become successful just by you being around. Just by you being there, mm -hmm. you're showing them something that some of us never had. Some of us are flipping the script. Some of us first generation fathers, we flipping the script on shit that, that, that's that been going on for, for years. Being around, being, a, a, you know, an attentive father, being, you know, simple shit like that. Mm -hmm. Everything ain't gonna get accomplished in one generation. You got played it. You were saying before, you know, about oh, you know yeah. when is it gonna happen? We playing the long game here. Mm -hmm. We we playing the long money game, and and when you when you got goals, and when you're trying to build an empire, thirty years ain't nothing. Right. So Forty years, not. fifty years is you nothing. Three, four, five generations. We're trying. We're trying to build success for generations. Now, how do we define success? <laughs> And that's something that is different, it's, I think, for every It's hard, you know, it's hard then, because... We you, talk, you were talking about levels. Now, there's, there's different levels of success. People view success right. in different ways. And some people don't care for it. Like, I you think know? some people... It, it depends. Some people want, I'm I by being comfortable. Some people are like, no, I want to have excess. I want to do anything unfortunately, I want to mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing, man. To each their own. Money, now, money has become the sign of success, unfortunately. And... and that's I'd say to me, you know what I see is more is I see freedom and self sufficiency as more important to me than money. You know, freedom to do what I want, self sufficiency to be able to do it when I want to do it, how I want to do it. You know, now again, those are financially tied, but I'm talking about things like you, as you mentioned, homeschooling. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I had the the ability to facilitate that in a way that I thought was feasible, again, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but in a way I thought, I would absolutely do it. You know what I mean? Or different ventures I like to do. Things like that. So, you know, when I think about being comfortable, I think that's a relative term because everybody has a different idea of what would make them, you know, happy. You know, my, my success ain't going to be your success. Right. I'm an educator. My success has become educating myself or educating the people around me. That's my success is, 
is seeing and putting that light bulb in somebody's head is 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 success to me. What I might doing? not be the richest person at the end of the no, day. No, no, so. Because what you're doing and the feeling you're getting and giving know. is something that you can't put a price tag on. That I might not be the, the richest man of the day, but my that. Va the, value the value is is in that, is in right. somebody else's value after a while. And that's yeah, the yeah, part yeah, of the yeah, teaching the world. Generation. That's the part of the teaching world that people don't see all the time is that, you know, you're instilling the values in many different, you know, careers, many different fields. Those people are taking those values and they're, they're running with it and, yeah, and becoming you, something. It's setting up the future. Yeah. Right. Feels, it feel, and when, like, when you see somebody successful, it feels good. Now, you said something real interesting, right? I wasn't able to hop on it when you said it, but you were talking about what success means to you. Freedom. Being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Basically, being in control of your destiny, right? Mm -hmm. Being in control of your actions. My time. At, your, <laughs> your time. Whatever the case may be, yeah. right? But you having your finger on the pulse of all of that right. because this is your life. As a people, collectively... This is what we struggle to get. Our finger on the pulse of our own lives. Control. You know what I mean? It's Direction. complex, man. It's hard. So it's complex. It's I, a, that's, that's, a, that's a very layered I don't, know, puzzle. I don't think it's, it's that complex. Many piece puzzle. What you said, as easy as it would be for you to apply it to your life, you can take that. You know what I'm saying? Not that I have the blueprint of the plan, but just having control. You know what I'm saying? Of your school systems. Other people do it. You know what I'm saying? Of your your banks or whatever whatever the case may be whatever it takes for you to like you said live your life how you want to live it do what you want to do when you want. Yeah, you get you get the juice, yo. You yeah, and you want so you on the mission, son. That's the problem is we attach it too many times and and look what they did to all our, our leaders. If you really want to even look at it like that. Who gonna jump up to be a leader when you see what happened to all the leaders that jump up? Mm -hmm. Who wanna be a leader after that? Hmm. Who wants to be a leader when the first leader that pops his head up is gonna be discredited, disgraced, disrespected, all the disses you could think of, you know? As soon as I come out and say something positive, yo, all of that's gonna come down on me. If I come out and say something negative, all the positive attention comes on me. You, you get what I'm saying? So who, who's gonna be a leader anymore? Who wants to be a leader? Being a leader is like painting a target on your back now. Yep. Because the moment they see you, it's like, yo, oh, that's going to be the one that's going to rile the people up. You know what? Let me find something on his past. Let me find something he did 20 years ago. A word. He, there was a question about him 20 years ago. We about to use that. Because for us, unfortunately, all it takes is a question. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All it takes is that question. Whereas you got to prove it for somebody else. All it takes is a question. You know, he, he might. He looked like he could. And that's all it takes to change your life. Oh, yeah, man. I, I just think, you know, ultimately, we, uh, we, we have to and we will eventually get to a point where we just take power and control back over our own lives collectively, you know, so individually. Each one and teach now, one. Yeah, I look, I look forward each to Each one teach some. Yeah. yeah. If you could teach some, teach some, but if you could only teach one, mm. teach the one, son. <laughs> teach that one in front of you, hopefully that one teach two. <laughs> you feel me? Hopefully that one go out and teach the sum, yo. Know? You taught one, that one taught the sum. Yeah. You know, yeah, all you can, that's what it was, all you can do is get that one that's in front of you. And the teaching world, we got that, I got sometimes 30 kids in the classroom and I see that one spark and I'm like, there he is. That's the one that's going to motivate me for this school year. That's the one that's going to keep me sharp. He's the one that's going to keep me on my P's and Q's this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything I say, he got a question. He come up with a good question. Made me go home at night and read up because I know he going to come tomorrow with that next question. I'm going to make sure I got an answer to that. Like, the teacher, the teacher also yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, coming to student. <laughs> you know, that's how it's supposed take. to be. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Really, that's how it's really supposed to be. That's what makes me feel good. You talk about value, what gives you success? Yeah. An interaction like that in the classroom with a kid, mm -hmm. that's success for me. Well, that's dope, man. Because it made wow. both of us better at the end of the day. That's it made him better, it made me better. That's a real made the class. The whole class that listened to the interaction between us just got better. Mm -hmm. well, shit, I hope anybody out there that's, that might be watching and uh, thinking about becoming a teacher has been uh, further inspired. And uh, hopefully has learned some things. You know what I'm saying? It's what always wrong. Say. Trust me. Yeah, the kids yeah, need yeah. us. It may take the same approach. Even somebody who wasn't thinking about it may be thinking about it now. 
due to you coming through, man. So I just I just want to thank you personally for joining yeah. us. You know what I'm saying, yeah, man. Yeah, appreciate right, your man. presence. Right. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know your name one more time. Come on, Hamilton. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. We need more brothers like him out there. Uh, sure. In the education and field, so uh, if they you need some advice, advice on how to do it. Yo, holla at one of them. They could. I mean, I can give you all the advice you need on uh, how to get up in it. Cause we need, we need, no we need more of us. That's it. No doubt, for man. real. No doubt. So you know, like I said, we we, we thank you for joining us. You no, know what I mean? Nothing, man. It's and nothing. Um, you know, of course, we thank y'all for checking us out, man. Until the next time, you know the code. Signing out. Jeez. Yeah, Gave us a different angle today, though, man. Appreciate that. Nah, I'm so you. Yeah, yeah, listen, man. Some good stuff, man. You know, man. Yeah, so, man. And, 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 and